Hello there, it is Rebecca R. Jones, and I'm here with a creative devotional and tutorial in the Illustrating Bible. This is a brand new Bible on the market with a four inch margin and 75% thicker paper. Be sure and follow along with me below. I'm going to have a download for you so you can pause the video, go and get that download from me over on the blog post, which is linked in the description box below the video. It says see more. When you click on there, you're going to get that. And I'm getting set up to do some page prep. You might wonder why I'm going to page prep on 75% thicker paper. And you know, if you watch my videos ahead of this one over the past week or so, you'll see that I've done some testing in here. And I just decided when I'm doing this project with ink tents that I would like to go ahead and page prep so that I don't have to worry about how the paper's going to act and I can just focus on creativity. That's one of the benefits of page prep. And page prep is something, you can go to pageprep.com if you wanna learn more about page prep. It's a technique that I developed with that clear base. And you can see I was super careful not to add any to the coils in my uh, Bible there. I think that that's especially important in this particular Bible. And this is the download that we're gonna be using. You can see through, I just wanted you to see up close with no lights on. You can see through the paper, but I'm going to add a light box under here so that it's easy for you to see and for me to see with the studio lights that I've got here, which makes it easy for you to watch what I'm doing. So we're in Philemon and I love this little book. Literally what you're looking at right there, all that text, that is the whole book of Philemon. And it's just this one chapter, real small and real wonderful. And I'm just tracing in my image. I would have drawn it straight on, but of course I wanted you to have a chance to see it. Just pay attention that some of the straw is hiding behind the ice and some of it is in front of the ice. And that's just giving it a little bit of a three dimensional feel to what I'm doing. And now I'm using ink tents on the left there. So you should be able to, if you kind of cock your head, you can see the names written on these, but I'll try and tell you what it is. It, like right now I'm looking at bright blue and I am just going to do a really, really simple background and focus on that fun glass there with the straw. And I am doing a fun little paper straw in here. So I feel like as the summer comes to a close, I just want a little last bit of refreshing. And I really felt the word refreshing be highlighted to me as I was asking the Lord about doing a devotional with you guys. And I wanted to share this one with you. I really want you to create with me, come into the Facebook group and connect with me there. If you're on my um, email list, then you're definitely going to get connected in. And I just want to be able to share this with you. So in this section, you'll see me circle the scripture at the end to bring a small highlight to that scripture. I tend to every now and then bring a lot of attention to the scripture that I'm doing some Bible art journaling on. But quite often, I tend to let whoever's looking at the page try and discover what scripture, just an invitation to read the scripture and try and figure out what that art means. And I think that's just my style. Do you best bring some highlight to that scripture if you want, but let's go ahead and read it while I color this in. And I'm just using water and I've got my two jars there. So I've got one for dirty water and one for clean water, a little paper towel, and I'm using ink tents. Of course, you could use watercolor, you could use gelatos, you probably don't want to use colored pencil because it's a large area, but you could do some colored pencil if you just want to do the glass and some outlining. And you know, any one of these products that I've been showing you, distress crayons, there's so many different products you can use with this. And if you watch my video showing you about the pens and the other one about the different supplies that you can use in this Bible, then you'll know exactly what you can and can't do in this Bible. So be sure to check those out. I'll link them below, um, but they're also just ones that I published before this. So in Philemon, it starts out right at the beginning. It says, Paul, a prisoner of Christ Jesus, and Timothy, our brother. And of course, I should mention, actually, that I have a review of this. So if you're wondering which translation I'm reading, I'm just reading it right out of here because I've got this Bible right in front of me while I'm recording the audio. 
and I am more than happy to read to you from whichever translation, but I think this is um, interesting for you to have a look at. So it says, Paul, a prisoner of Christ Jesus and Timothy, our brother, to Philemon, our dear friend and co-worker, to Aphia, our sister, to Archippus, our fellow soldier, and to the church that meets in your home. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, a couple of things to mention here. He says that it's Paul and Timothy. It was Paul writing this letter, and he's writing it to Philemon, to Aphia, to Archippus, and to the church that meets in, I would assume, Archippus' home, or maybe Philemon's home. Didn't really feel clear in that sentence whose home it was, but basically, maybe they're all living together. Philemon, Aphia, Archippus, and the church that meets in their home. So these are the people, and the letter it was written, it is called Philemon, but this is a letter from Paul to Philemon, these friends, and the church that's meeting in their home. So it's a small home church, and he's writing to them, and he says there in verse four and five, I always thank my God when I mention you in my prayers. And this is one of my favorite books of the Bible, actually. I love this little section of scripture, how Paul feels about all of the Christians around him. And you'll see, I'm just thinking about what I'm going to create next or where I want to color and kind of deciding for myself. But there's a little bit of pencil that's quite heavy in there. And because I've traced it with a pencil that has a very soft lead, it means it'll smear when I start using it. So what I do is I trace it in there and then I use this eraser pen, which is white eraser, and I just flick off all of the stuff there. Every now and then I rub my finger along the eraser to get off the black marks so that that doesn't transfer and smudge everywhere. And then that's it. I can keep on pulling some of the lead off of the surface. And so I'm left with a faint hint of whatever it is. You can use a harder pencil if you don't want to uh, bother with that. And that would be easier. I just grabbed the first one in front of me. So I was doing a little bit of erasing along the way. And so that's it. I'm just headed in there with some sun yellow and I'm going to get some color in there. Just being careful to remember that there's light coming in and bouncing off some of the ice cubes. So I'm going to have some very clear color and some very bright color. And then I'm doing a, a white and purple straw. I'd be curious to see how you paint or draw this little area. And I'll have you know that this download, I checked next to some of my other Bibles, my other journaling Bibles, and this would definitely fit most of the way inside the margin. If you shrunk it, it will fit inside of a margin of another Bible. So if you don't have the illustrating Bible, certainly use it anyway and just shrink it on your printer, do whatever you want. So here we are. Paul is writing this letter to Philemon, Aphia, Archippus, and the friends at their church. And he's saying grace and peace to you. And he says, I always thank my God when I mention you in my prayers, because I hear of your love for all the saints and the faith that you have in our Lord Jesus. I pray that your participation in the faith may become effective through knowing, and this is verse seven, this is where I am creating. He says, I pray that your participation in the faith may become effective through, verse 7, knowing every good thing that is in us for the glory of Christ. For I have great joy and encouragement from your love because the hearts of the saints have been refreshed through you, brother. So he's saying, brother, to Philemon. It's titled, this little section, Philemon, Philemon's Love and Faith. He says, right here, I pray that your participation in the faith may become effective through knowing every good thing that is in us for the glory of Christ. He's talking about the goodness of God that lives in us. When we become a, a follower of Christ, we actually become no longer sinners, but we become saints. We are uh, transformed. Our old man is dead. And sometimes we like to revive him and pretend like we're still that wretched sinner. But the Bible is really clear, actually. And I can't get into the detail of it in such a short video. But it is so important for us to remember that we need to live in who God has created us to be when, when we bury our old man and we move on and we become 
a follower of Jesus, we actually let go of that old man and we don't need to identify with who he was in the past. So we then look at this. So you can see I'm just making a faint shadow of the color behind the ice cubes that are in front of the straw just so that the color is suggested but it brings a little three-dimensional to it but because these ice cubes are clear they will actually show some color through. So that's how I'm getting around that three-dimensional feel. So at what I'm saying here is I find this really a fascinating section of scripture because he's saying, Paul is saying to Philemon, I pray your, participa your participation in the faith may become effective. So he wants it to become effective through knowing that every good thing that is in us is for the glory of Christ. All those good things that God puts in our lives, that's because it's for the glory of Christ. When we produce... Uh, the good character that he has for us and we live from a place of God's goodness in our world, then it actually gives glory to God, which is what we want. We want to identify with the good things that he has given us to walk in. And he says here, for I have great joy and encouragement from your love because, he says, the hearts of the saints have been refreshed through you. I want to be and I'm sure you do too. I want to be someone who causes people to be refreshed by how I act around them, how much I love them, how much I care for them where they are, how much I produce the godliness of Christ in me and the light of him through me. I want to express the love of God in a way that absolutely, without a doubt, causes people to be refreshed beyond measure. So I'm making a cold glass of lemonade to refresh those who look in my Bible. And I hope and pray that you are refreshed when you spend time with this art ministry with me. I want you to be refreshed in your faith and I really want you to do the same. I encourage you, let us be a people who refresh other people. We don't tear one another down or we don't accidentally hurt someone and then not make amends with those things. Life is too short on this earth to not live from a place of love. And I think it's uh, fitting that he goes on in this section and he, he gives an appeal. And it's not necessarily my uh, section of scripture that I'm focusing on in this particular entry. So I'm going to stop with that part. And I just wanted to... Um, look at the little verse at the very end of the book in verse 25, his final greetings, he says, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. I want to be someone who brings the grace of God to people that I am able to feel absolute love for what's going on around me. And I know that we have really um, such a, a joy and treasure being able to love on those around us, even when we don't necessarily agree. And I think that that is uh, one of the things that I find fascinating about this is that we see evidence in these books of the Bible that all of these apostles and disciples, they didn't always see eye to eye on things, but they chose to focus on what they could agree on and found a place of unity there and found a place to just love one another. And, you know, yes, they challenged one another, but they also just said, I love you and you are good enough right where you are. And I want to be those people who just pours a glass of refreshing for every single person that comes into our place. Now, you may not be able to see the uh, drawing here, but it's actually very easy to see. Apologies for some of that being a little missing in place there, but um, I've just flooded that table with some color. And then on the sides, I'm putting in a little bit of a darker shadow with some of this darker color so that I can get in there and make it look like there's some light bouncing off the top of the table, but it's a shadow on the sides of the panels, just like a wooden table. So that's all I'm doing there. It's super easy. You know, if you think that you can't 
color in your Bible in order to help you visually connect with scripture, I want to challenge you, you know, this is, this is coloring in and we can certainly color in. You can color in with whatever art supply is going to make you feel the safest. What matters is us getting in scripture and being transformed by it. I'm so, so blessed to do life with all of you. And, you know, I haven't been able to do as much as I would like in this last season, but I'm so grateful for all of your support and love in this season. And I'm so thrilled to be able to see how much you all refresh one another and encourage one another in my community. Our Facebook group is fantastic. Everybody is so lovely. No, um, it, uh, nothing there that could be further from that. I'm just so blessed to see how lovely you all are. So can you see how flat that is laying? There's just a slight bend to it. It's been closed for two or three days and I am aware that it's going to totally dry on me and it will be flat as can be in a few days. But I think that the page prep has made this paper even more robust and it did not buckle or feel delicate with page prep on it in the slightest. Uh, page prep doesn't buckle any of your paper in a traditional Bible, but it didn't feel delicate at all. And in this paper, there's more space to cover for sure. So you do need more product, but it is a really nice space. And I felt like I had lots of space. What I would say is that the illustrating Bible, I think a lot of people are feeling intimidated to start. And I always tell people, don't start creating on your favorite scripture of all time and put all sorts of pressure on yourself to create a monumental artistic feat. What you want to do is just find somewhere tucked away to just grow in your faith. And this is a great place. If you want to remind yourself to be that place of refreshing for others, then draw with me. I've got that free download for you. It'll come in your inbox as soon as you pop over to my blog post and just fill out the details. You're looking for that little yellow box and you can just fill out the details um, and I'll email it straight to you and you can end up with um, just tracing this into your Bible or shrink it into whatever other Bible you've got if this one isn't one you're going to get. And let's go on a journey together. Let's, uh, let's talk about how we refresh people. Now, you can see that I am going through and I'm adding some color where it's in kind of random places. Anywhere where I think the light might be on the top of the glass, I'm hardly putting any yellow on there because I've got that first layer on there that was really thin of yellow. And then I'm going in and I'm adding a really bright lemon. And now I'm adding a bit of a dark sort of burst of color at the bottom of the glass where all of that color will have flooded into. And because I'm using ink tense, it's actually an ink that is very vibrant. That's why it's ink tense. And all of these supplies are linked on my blog. So you can go over there and get into, um, you know, finding out where all of these products are. I always link everything, including this Bible. If you haven't bought this Bible and you want to, I've got a link below which will um, allow you to support this ministry with your purchase, which is great. Thank you if you do that and there's no pressure whatsoever. But see, this is still slightly wet so you can see that it's spreading some of the color. But as soon as it dries like that purple, it's dry. It's not moving anywhere. And as much as it may feel a little bit scary, I think it's actually easier to use than something like watercolor, which will actually scrub up with a wet brush months and months, years down the road because it's water reactive. Whereas ink is not water reactive, it's permanent. And once you activate it by getting it wet and it dries, it is dry, which means that you have a limited period of time to move it around where you want it. So you just keep moving with it and then you're done and you let it dry for a moment. When it's done, I can go over with the yellow over the top of that um, 
that straw and it's not going to spread the purple everywhere. So that means that I don't have to be really careful about the layer that I put over the top of it. You can certainly glaze and do all sorts of fancy things with watercolor, but if you feel new to water media like this, like watercolor and ink tents, um, and it all feels like it kind of moves around or you make mud and things like that. I think the ink tense is actually a very, very simple way to make it super easy on yourself, which is so fun because you can get in there and just create without worrying about what's going to happen. You can see I've made a little puddle of color for myself, but I know that I've got to keep things moving so that it doesn't dry on me. And then I'm going to go in. You can see I'm just leaving a lot of focus on the glass and you know I think this is where a lot of people stop their creative process is around here where they've sort of gotten something in there and they think oh my goodness I've put so much work into this and I don't want to hurt it do you know what I mean and tell me in the comments if you know what I mean <laughs> so I have to say that right here is where you need to get some more color on there or you need to outline something you need to let it pop off the page and I didn't have a lot of time to sit and add more and more color and I figured that you don't either so I decided I would go in there get it all nice and dry and then if you've got the time you can let it air dry of course but once it's dry then you can go in with some pen. Now, I've I've cheated here a little bit because I uh, repeatedly tell you guys not to use your pens within the first 24 hours of page prepping. And I'm, excuse me, I'm breaking my rules and I'm going to go ahead and do this without um, waiting. And the reason I'm doing that is because I am pushing not very heavily at all. In fact, I'm being very light-handed. And the reason for that is because the, the sort of chalk base of the gesso is on the surface, that page prep is on the surface, and if I push my pen nib into it too hard, it will actually cause fragments of it to get clogged into the pen nib. Now, if you don't trust yourself with this process, then I urge you to not do this part until you've waited for 24 hours. I've gotten used to this process. I'm comfortable with it. I've killed a few pens. I know how hard to push or not, and I'm okay with that. If you can't afford to hurt your pens, wait for 24 hours and let that page prep cure and then come in and outline everything like this. And it's really good. It'll help you to get to grips with all of this. So I've got a few different pen nib sizes and I think the notorious one for causing problems is the really thin one. And I think I'm gonna avoid that one and just go for some in between. So what I am doing is I'm deliberately making things not perfect. So I've got a kind of a rough idea of what I'm doing with this glass, but you can see I deliberately didn't pick up my hand and I just kept going and it's kind of bumpy and everything's a little bit shaky and I'm doing that by holding my hand away from the paper. So by doing that I force my hands to be in charge of what I'm doing there. So my hand is not actually touching the paper and I'm just letting my pen touch and that is meaning that everything just has to be down to me holding still. If you've got a shaky hand, put your finger down, you know, maybe your pinky down or something like that. But essentially what you end up with is something that is more handmade. And that's what we want to know. We want to know this wasn't printed in your Bible. We want to know that you created it. And that is what makes it really special. So now I'm putting my hand down to try and control my movement a little bit, but not a ton. And I'm putting some little mint leaves in there so that I can have a mint lemonade. And I'm just going to go in and color things, being careful to remember what is behind the straw and what is in front of the straw so that I get that three-dimensional feel. And it's super simple little tricks like that that make you feel like you're able to look deep into the picture, which is really easy. You know, I've folded over that last leaf there and you can see a little shadow of the 
the bottom of it folded over in the back there. These are really simple little tricks to do. Now I'm going to change pen tips one more time and get something little tiny for those delicate ice cubes and get in there and color. Guys, this has been so much fun to create with you and I really want to see you over in the Facebook group showing me photos of you creating in your own Bibles or art journals, whatever you're creating. I want to see what you're doing to connect with the scripture. I think that, um, that one of the things that is really key to me about all of this is that we learn visually um, and through doing a lot of us. And for those of us who really connect with Bible journaling, it's often that place of really not just reading the word, but acting out something that helps lock it into our memory, something that visually helps us to connect with things. And doing this is really a key way for us to connect with the scripture and make it come alive. By the time you're finished creating this, you've got a really good grasp on what that section of scripture has spoken to you about. And I want you to talk to me in the comments below. What does this scripture talk to you about? Will you please subscribe if you haven't before? Because I would love to have you as a subscriber and pop over and get this free download if you have never been over to my blog. There's always lots of free content over there. You can just go to RebeccaRJones.com, like you see on the screen, and you'll usually see things right there on the blog, but you can um, always find links below my video in a little box. It says like show more or see more, something like that. You click on that and you get lots of more detail going on. And here I am, I'm going to circle my verse seven and head down to highlight some scripture. And you know, if you don't feel like your handwriting is beautiful, that is not the point. The point is that it is your handwriting and it is your Bible. So please use your handwriting, do what is you, you know, you do you best. Let yourself shine through here. I wanted to highlight this to myself. May the hearts of the saints be refreshed through you. So this part is not on the download because I want you to use your handwriting and you can copy what I'm saying or you can come up with your own thing to just remind yourself of this. But for me, I want to remind myself when I'm looking to pour myself a glass of refreshing for those around me. You can see how great that is. No real bleed through, nothing like that. Please join me, grab the download, come share on the Facebook group, talk to me in the comments, and please give this a big thumbs up if you like it and hit that subscribe button. Always love to hang out with you. I will see you very soon. You are loved.